Hi, my name is Martin Milmore. My pronouns are he, him. I'm here today with my colleague Ruslan Khachakov to talk to you about how to ensure you retain users with Android Backup and Restore. First of all, let's go on a user journey. Meet Sally. Sally has a great job as a food microbiologist. It keeps her really busy. Her job is pretty exhausting though, and she loves nothing more than coming home from a hard day at the lab and playing casual games on her phone. Sally loves her phone. She bought it in 2017 to watch The Good Place on her commute, although these days she mainly plays games on it. Unfortunately though, it's just not got the power it once did. Sally goes to her local independent phone store where she's recommended a fantastic new Android phone by the highly knowledgeable shop assistant, Hakim. When Sally gets home, she can't wait to set up a new phone and she's delighted at how easily she can transfer all of her apps, photos, messages and settings from her old phone. As soon as the transfer has finished, she wants to see how some of her favorite games on this gorgeous new phone work. Her favourite casual game is Super Soccer Goalie Catch 2. It's taken her months to get to level 123, but she can't wait to blast through that on her new phone. Unfortunately, when she opens it, she finds that all of her progress has gone. It's going to take her days and days of playing to get back to where she was. Disheartened, Sally decides it's not worth the time to get back where she was. She uninstalls the old game and installs arch-rival app Soccer Goalie 3D. Undeterred, Sally opens up her Protein Shake Tracker app. Sally loves protein shakes and she likes to rate them and track how much nutrition she's getting. When she opens the app, Sally gets prompted to log in. But Sally doesn't remember her login and she hasn't got a password manager. She's pretty sure she's changed her email address since then too. She's kind of stuck. I'm pretty sure you've guessed what's coming. Sally uninstalls it and decides to try out the great new app Protein Mate that has been heavily advertised on her Instagram feeds. Sally loves her new phone and she loves most of the apps on it, but she's frustrated that a few of them didn't transfer their data. Now let's meet another user. Here's Javier. Javier uses his iPhone to message his grandchildren. He's got a lot of pictures of them on there and it means everything to him. Javier is an early adopter and he regularly gets a new phone. He really likes the look of the new foldable Android phones. It'll give him more screen space to message and play games as well as bragging rights with his friends. Javier transfers all of his apps and contacts and photos from his iPhone to his new Android foldable. After he transfers, he goes straight to his messaging app to look at the photos of his grandchildren on the big screen. He's devastated to find that his messaging app hasn't brought his messages across from his iPhone. He's thinking perhaps it's time to use a different messaging app. Now you might think all of this is scaremongering, but at Google, we've done a lot of research into the switching experience and users are not happy when this happens. Here's a quote from an article in the Guardian newspaper this week, which echoes our research. The user left his phone on the roof of the car and when his game progress was not transferred onto the new device, he uninstalled the game. We hear this over and over in our research. Here's a summary of our research findings. Users are surprised that the app doesn't pick up where it left off on the old phone. They're upset at the loss of their personal data. And they don't blame Android or the OEM. They blame the app or they blame themselves. In the setup experience, only 30% of devices are set up as new. The vast majority of users want their data to be coming across from their old phone. When that doesn't happen, it upsets users, which leads to lower ratings in the Play Store and to a direct loss of users. Don't be like this developer, wondering where his users are going. You fight hard to get those users in the first place. Make sure you keep them when they get a new device. 
Fortunately, Android has made it incredibly simple to transfer your application's data to a new device and even back it up to the cloud for free. Help grow your user base and ultimately your revenue with a high quality app that users trust. Here's Ruslan to explain how to do that. Thank you, Martin. My name is Ruslan and I'm an engineer on Android Backup and Restore. And I'm here to show you how to leverage Backup and Restore to give your users the perfect experience when they switch to a new device. We'll look at two cases, iOS to Android and Android to Android switches. So let's get started. If the user is coming from an iOS phone, they can connect it to their new Android device using a cable and go through a device to device migration or D2D for short. During D2D, we'll look at what apps they have on their iOS device. We'll try to find their Android equivalents in the Play Store and install them automatically. For some apps, we can also transfer the app data. Please reach out to us at the email address on the slide if you're interested in data transfer between the iOS and Android versions of your app to better retain users when they're switching platforms. For Android to Android switches, the users can also connect their devices by cable. We'll re-download all their apps as well as transfer up to two gigabytes of data for each participating app in Backup Restore. If the user doesn't have their old device at the moment, they can restore data from a cloud backup that has been created earlier. That is because app data on Android devices is regularly backed up to the cloud. These app data backups are end-to-end -end encrypted on devices running Android Pi and later, provided that the user has set a pin, pattern, or password to unlock their screen. And this mode will backup up to 25 megabytes of data for each participating app on the device. On the previous slides, I said that we transfer data for apps that participate in Backup and Restore. What does that mean? Backup and Restore is already enabled for all apps on Android M and later, unless you explicitly opt out. You can control and customize its behavior very easily, and we'll look at how to do that later in the talk. But at this point, you might be thinking, I already use some kind of solution to keep my user's data synced to the cloud, like Firebase, or a custom backend. Why do I need Backup and Restore? First of all, to take advantage of the in-app cloud sync, the user needs to sign into your app, whereas the data handled by Backup and Restore is available even before that, because we've already identified the user through their Google account. Second, and maybe even more important point, is there is lots of data that is unique to the device and not to the account within the app. And such data, apps don't usually sync to the cloud. For example, let's say that you have an onboarding tutorial that you show once per device and not per account. Or let's say that you have a settings screen within your app where the user can customize how they want the app to look and behave on this specific device. I could go on and on here, but the point is your users would really love for all these preferences to be already set correctly when they first launch the app on their new phone. With that said, let's look at how you can configure Backup and Restore for your Android app. By default, all apps participate in auto backup. This means that most of your app data will be included into both cloud backup and D2D transfers. We'll only exclude the cache directory and the special no backup folder where you can put stuff that you don't want to be backed up or transferred. And while auto backup is the approach we recommend, there is also something called key value backup, where you need to, at runtime, provide a set of key value pairs that you want to be backed up. And we'll look at that option as well later in the talk. But for now, assuming that you are happy with auto backup, let's see what kind of customizations you could make to the default behavior. You can set rules on what files or directories should be included into the cloud backup or device transfer. You can also say, that you want cloud backups only if the device supports end-to-end -end encryption. To do all of that, you just need to create an XML file with your configuration. As you can see on the slide, the config contains two sections, one for cloud backups and one for device transfers. Inside each section, you can put rules on what files or directories to exclude or include. In our example, we excluded our Firebase push token from the cloud backup because it won't work on any other device. It makes sense to exclude data 
that can't be reused outside of this particular device. We also excluded a large downloadable file. If data can easily be re-downloaded from somewhere, there is no point in including it into the cloud backup. Also, we've set the disable if no encryption capabilities flag to true for cloud backups. This means that data will not be backed up to the cloud unless end-to-end -end encryption is available. Finally, we defined a more relaxed configuration for device-to-device -device transfers, as there is no cloud storage involved in the process. Once your config is ready, you need to point to it in the Android manifest file using the data extraction rules attribute. Also, don't forget to target Android 12, as that's where the attribute was introduced. You can find more detailed instructions on configuring auto backup by following the link on this slide. Now, let's briefly look at the alternative I mentioned earlier, which is key value backup. Here, you need to extend a class called backup agent and implement the behavior you'd like on backup and on restore. As part of the backup event, you can check the same conditions like presence of end-to-end -end encryption and whether the operation currently happening is a cloud backup or a device transfer to better determine which key value pairs should be included. And again, when your agent is ready, don't forget to point to it in the Android manifest. If you're interested in key value backups, you can follow the link on this slide for a step-by-step -step guide on implementing them. Now, there is a specific category of app data I'd like to talk a bit more about. One of the biggest obstacles that users face when they launch an app on their new device is signing into it again. Chances are they don't even remember their login and password. Wouldn't it be great if your app could automatically recognize the user, allowing them to pick up right where they left off on their old device? To achieve this, you can use Block Store, which allows you to transfer to the new device whatever login credentials you need to identify the user as part of a device-to-device -device migration. Block Store is independent of things like auto backup and key value backup, and you can use it to transfer your auth token even if you don't use Backup and Restore for anything else. Let's take a quick look at how it works. Whenever the user signs into your app, and you generate an auth token or any other login credentials, simply save them into Block Store, which will encrypt and securely store it. When your app is launched on the new device, following a device-to-device -device migration, you can request the credentials you saved earlier from Block Store and sign the user in without asking them for login and password. You can learn more about Block Store by following the link on the slide. Once you've configured everything as you like, whether it's auto backup or key value backup, it's very important to do some testing to make sure you're getting the behavior you want when your app is launched for the first time after a restore. Testing is very easy with a special workflow that lets you emulate both cloud and device to device transfers for your app specifically using just a single device or emulator. You can file detailed instructions by following the link on the slide. Last but not least, it's very important to keep your configuration up to date. As your app evolves and new features get added, make sure those are covered by Backup and Restore. If you're using Auto Backup, you likely don't need to do anything. All the new data is included by default. If you're using Key Value, update your backup agent to cover any relevant info. Finally, I'd like to highlight some important changes that we made recently. These apply to apps running on and targeting Android 12. First of all, we've heard from app developers that they were concerned about ADB backup making their app data easily extractable. To address this, we've turned off ADB backup for all apps. So having backup and restore enabled no longer means your app is exposed to ADB backup. You can still use it though for testing and development purposes if you need. Secondly, we've introduced the data extraction rules config which I demonstrated in the earlier slides, is the new way to control auto backup. The old way, which is the allow backup flag and the full backup content config are being phased out. We recommend that you use data extraction rules for Android 12 and beyond, while also maintaining full backup content config for earlier OS versions. You can find a detailed description of these changes by following the link on the slide. And now, 
I would like to hand it back over to Martin. Thanks, Ruslan. I'm sure you're excited to make sure your app data can transfer over to a new device. The good news is that Backup to the Cloud is available for free on over 2 billion Android devices today. And Wi-Fi and cable transfers are expanding to be on every new Android device from January 2022. All of this works by default. We'd encourage you to make sure it's turned on and fine tune what gets exported if you have large or sensitive data. And don't forget the new Blockstore API to allow you to handle passwords securely. You can find out more at g.co slash android slash backup and contact us at switching at google.com. Thank you for your time today. I hope you found this useful and you will take advantage of backup and restore to give your users an even better experience.